Hi, I'm Graham. I'm a 62-year-old man that's been fighting male pattern baldness for 40 years uh, with some success. Uh, I'm not a doctor, uh, but I do have postgraduate deg degrees in science, and that has helped me consume a lot of the scientific literature um, on my journey. Today, I'm going to uh, continue to explore minoxidil, um, specifically looking at the rise of minoxidil boosters. Uh, now, in my last video, I talked about how minoxidil sulfate was the active metabolite that helped maintain, and in some cases, regrow hair, as it did for me. Um, we looked at the various techniques and supplements that upregulate um, the enzymes required uh, to actually make the chemical transition from minoxidil to minoxidil sulfate, uh, such as uh, microneedling um, and tretinoin uh, and, and many others. Um, not surprisingly, in, in our capitalist world, um, when people see this research, uh, they start thinking about products. Uh, and so there are now three products on the market shown here, um, which are loosely titled minoxidil boosters. And uh, what we're gonna do in this video is look at each of these. We'll look at the ingredients um, and whether the, the ingredients uh, indicate there should be some efficacy uh, and some benefit to us. Um, before we get into looking at those, um, I want to refresh us and look at the chemical reaction that we're trying to stimulate in the outer root sheath of the hair follicle, and specifically this chemical reaction, um, that is minoxidil to minoxidil sulfate, um, which uh, relies on the enzyme um, sulfur transferase or SALT1A1 uh, in our case. Now, the minoxidil boosters um, derive from a research paper um, in the last couple of years um, that are shown here. Um, and essentially, um, I think what they determined was that by increasing the alkalinity in the outer root sheath um, was something that actually helped the, the generation of minoxidil sulfate. So it helped shift this uh, chemical equation to the right. Um, and we'll look specifically at a product, one of the three products actually derived directly uh, from a guy called Andy Gorin um, that was directly involved in this initial research. So first up, um, we'll look at a product called Cosmofix, um, which is currently available in, in India uh, and increasingly gaining distribution across Asia Pacific and into Japan specifically. Um, now, this uh, original, the company that actually uh, licenses this globally um, was up until recently called Jupiter Wellness. They acquired a company called Applied Biology, where Andy Goran was, um, and they are then doing these licenses around the world. Now, since uh, they made the acquisition, Jupiter Wellness has changed its name to Safety Shot, since their major product they're trying to monetize is actually... Uh, to help you if you drink a lot. Um, it helps you uh, recover from, from taking in too much alcohol. So they changed the company name, um, but they still have uh, this, uh, this uh, enzymatic product, the minoxidil booster uh, on the book. So we'll look at this one first. And so what you can see on, on this diagram is you can see obviously the product label there. Um, and then what I've done is I've listed the ingredients uh, straight off the, the back of the product. Um, and what I've done is I've highlighted in blue uh, those that I think uh, can increase efficacy. Um, and you'll see that the top one there, tetrasodium EDTA, um, in addition to being a chelating agent, uh, also is used as a pH adjuster uh, in that it will actually increase the alkal alkalinity uh, in the environment. So that one effectively builds directly off of the original research paper. Now, the bottom... Uh, in green is actually the, the active ingredient they used during research, which was a liposomal form of sodium bicarbonate, which is also there specifically to increase the, the alkalinity um, in the outer root sheath. And liposomal basically just means that it's the way in which the drug is packaged to penetrate through um, the layers of skin and into the cell. So what do I think about this one? I, my view is this is probably the best of the bunch. 
Uh, it's based on the original research. It's based on the original research team. Um, and I'm assuming that what they've done here uh, in this set of ingredients is they've optimized how they actually change the pH uh, in the outer root sheet. So not available in the US. Um, it is available in, in India and, and across Asia. Um, I have not seen it or had access to it. Um, but again, I believe this is probably the best of the bunch. Um, the second product I want to look at is um, a product from uh, Daniel Alain. Uh, he has a number of products uh, for skin and hair care. Specifically, um, he has a product um, which he sells in addition to selling monoxidil, which, which he calls his own monoxidil booster. And as you can see from the ingredients that we're looking at right here, um, the top ingredient there is sodium bicarbonate. So the ingredients are listed exactly as they are on the product label. Um, and again, he's obviously looked at the research uh, and seen that increasing the alkalinity actually drives the reaction to the right and increases the amount of monoxidal sulfate in the outer root sheath. However, um, it does not mention liposomal or any other uh, delivery mechanism uh, by which we actually get the, the active chemical uh, into the outer root sheath. So I don't know whether or not just putting sodium bicarbonate into a product with some, uh, some other chemicals to increase absorption and skin penetration are actually going to have the same results of the original research. Um, now, there are a couple of other things in here that potentially help. Um, you can see here the two in blue um, do have uh, some sort of measurable effect on the hair, um, but these have no relationship from what I can see in the literature um, to uh, generating increased amounts of monoxidal sulfate. So I believe this product is primarily there trying to increase the alkalinity and really leveraging off of the research. I have doubts about the effectiveness of this uh, for those reasons. It, it, to me, this looks like someone's been reading the research um, and tried to put a product together that borrows from the research, but without understanding the deep level of knowledge uh, that the original researchers actually had. So, you know, I don't think there's anything harmful in this. Um, I just don't see that this is going to be very effective. Uh, the last product that we're going to look at here um, is from a company called Rita Hair Research Institute, RHRA. And this is actually a product uh, that I purchased on Amazon. It's less than $20. Um, I used it a few times, had a very large shed, um, which as we all know, uh, is not necessarily a terrible sign because uh, it just indicates the transition from your hair from, from one stage to another stage. Um, monoxidil, finasteride, dutasteride, all likely give, give you a shed when you start using them. Um, this one um, is interesting in that look at the length of the ingredient list. Now, not too far down, uh, the, we, we, the fourth item on the, on the list of ingredients is retinoic acid, um, which is one of the chemicals that we know upregulates salt 1A1, 1A1 or um, sulfur transferase. So this actually does contain an ingredient um, that could be useful, um, but it's muddied with a lot of other ingredients in here as well. Um, and as I went through these, um, it just appears to me like this is a random set of chemicals, uh, herbs and chemicals that somewhere in the literature, someone has suggested has an impact on hair. Now, it does not specifically mean they have an impact on minoxidil, the action of minoxidil, the increased degree in which you translate or, 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 or generate minoxidil sulfate from the minoxidil that you apply to your head. Um, it looks more to me like this product is just a complete catch-all of products that they believe will help your hair. Nothing to do with minoxidil, should not be called minoxidil booster in my opinion, and I looked at and researched all of the ingredients in this product uh, before doing this video. This one would be the one I had least confidence in working. So uh, let me, let's just summarize and take a look back. So we know that moxidil sulfate is the active metabolite that impacts the hair follicle 
uh, causes you to maintain and potentially regrow your hair as it did with me. Um, further, we know that there is this research paper less than two years old where a group of scientists, uh, including Andy Gorin, uh, tested a group of 24 people, um, 12 in the active group, 12 in the placebo group, um, and, they, and they applied this uh, innovative uh, solution uh, and they got results. 75% of the people they applied their topical solution to uh, had hair regrowth. Um, in the placebo group, um, it was 33%. So a significant difference. But the number, the N is still very small. And I haven't seen any uh, replication or, or reproducing of these results uh, in the scientific literature. Not to say it hasn't been done, um, but there is some science here. Um, so what would I do? For me, I'm not going to take any of these. Um, the only one I would potentially take is Cosmofix or whatever uh, safety shot or Jupiter Wellness decides to call it if they ever launch the product in the US. Um, you might ask the interesting question, why haven't they launched in the US? Why did they push it to India uh, and then out license it out to the Far East? Um, I think it continues to be a very interesting area. Um, whether you're producing monoxidal sulfate actually in the liver or whether you're actually uh, converting monoxidal to monoxidal sulfate in the outer root sheath um, by uh, stimulating uh, salt 1A1. Um, next video I'll produce um, is going to actually do something interesting. I'm going to look at the mechanisms for monoxidal. Um, it's widely misunderstood, um, but there's some pretty interesting research uh, that I've been going through. And I will actually um, cover that in the next video. So with that, uh, I wish you all um, good health and uh, good hair. And uh, I'll see you next time on the channel. And uh, please remember to like, subscribe, ask me any questions uh, that you have. Maybe you're using something that's working for you uh, and you like to uh, dig into the scientific literature. I'll be more than happy to do that. But until then, um, I'll see you next time.